we did last time record to the cloud. This is quite an amazing shape if you think about it. It's and this helps you think about it. This is C60. Hard to see because of this special effect. There you got a little glimpse of it. <laughs> yeah. It makes me think about, um, you know, CGI and all the movie effects that we see every mo anymore. It's like you're in that world of magic where anything, yeah. anything can happen. Oh, that would be possible with this. Like a cloud in the sky. And then I'm showing and the it on top. It replaces heavy this. Heavy brick. We can be on any planet. You yep. simulate the gravity. It's like now we're on Mars. It's you know. <laughs> so you're um gonna show us something today about the what's in your backyard that you are did you 3D print it? Okay, the 3D print thing, I got it out to show you, but it's going to be, it's, it's tiny. It's just a little thing. You know, the thing about 3D printing is you only want to print things that are about this, this big. This has a coin magnetized onto it. Oh, here, let me make that uh, larger there. Hold on a second. Yeah. Okay, so, so does this look big to you? On, on my screen, I'm, I'm little. Nice. Anyway, this 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 is actually this is not the basis of the S module that we talked about yesterday. That's the base. Oh, here's my here's my S module. So I went to a local library and there was a lot of books in Russian there because Portland has pretty big Russian ethnic speaking community and the the library there had a lot of fun Russian titles. That's kind of just to set the I like place-based education. Anyway, this is the S module we printed there. And really the, nice. the, the key thing is to figure out where does this fit in? What problem does it solve geometrically? And an easy way to explain it is you apply these S modules to the faces of an icosahedron, 24 of them. So you kind of cram them in on top of the faces in a mm -hmm. certain way and what you get from that, and I'm looking around for one, is an octahedron. And not just a regular octahedron, but it has a specific volume. In other words, in the math that we're looking at, where the S module fits in, also the A, B, E, and T modules, they're all just kind of building blocks in a very specific geometry where everything has a specific volume. Like the A module, the B module, and the T module are all 1 over 24 and stuff like that. And, and Sam's gallery here that we were just looking at, Lattice Gallery, is yeah. using a lattice that this A, B, S, T module way of thinking is very consistent with. So like if in elementary school, you're learning about A and B modules, then you know later in college, when you're designing bridges or whatever, you've still got that foundation and what we're looking at here, so-called concentric hierarchy, of a whole number of volumes. Now, not all the volumes are whole number, right? There's the icosahedron in this picture is 18.51 and then dot, 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 lots more digits. Right. And phi or phi, do you say phi or phi, where you come from? Say that again, please. The golden mean, do you say phi or do you say phi, that Greek language? Uh, we, I think I've heard phi more than phi. <laughs> I've even heard tau. Some people want to use a whole different yeah, Greek. I've heard that too, yeah. That's I didn't a know what it meant. Together. But I, I say phi. So when when I talk about a lot of these volumes, these polyhedrons, like we we being like the people who are into this geometry, I just dropped my S module. By the way, these have lids. <clears throat> um, if you want to fill them with something, you can you can do that and then put a lid on it. Maybe you're gluing it or something like that. Uh, so the S module, I showed you where that fits into the puzzle. You can express its volume in terms mm -hmm. of phi or phi. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then from there, so one of the things I do like in my so-called calculator to, of tomorrow 
is I use extended precision, arbitrary precision numbers to, to verify that 24S modules added to a certain icosahedron give me, you know, I, I, I do arithmetic around this stuff. And, and you're teaching I, math to students in order partly to give them these patterns so that their minds can think in new ways, right? Right, and that they can hang their computational skills, like when it comes to volumes, and they're actually trying to write, you know, this plus this equals that. They're thinking about volumes when they do that. It's like cube plus cube equals whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the Sesame Street stuff, hmm. that has to do with how these volumes all transform into each other, kind of like a subway train map. Like when you look at those maps of subway systems, if you get right. on here and right. take this transformation, which means take the blue line, and you go three stops, then you're at this station. And the way we're treating the polyhedrons in some of our courses is like, here you are at this station. Now, if you do this, that, and the other to the polyhedron, it's going to end up over here. And you draw these maps, which are really cool. Like, I didn't invent this or anything. It's just graph theory right. applied to, to polyhedrons. Right. Makes sense. So I used the subway metaphor a lot, and that was a picture of a subway car painted with Sesame Street stuff. And I also talk about Sesame Street quite a bit as influential in how I like to approach these things, which is you don't dwell on any one topic for too many hours, right? It's a jump around more, which drives some people crazy. Some people hate, what is, what's your feeling on Sesame Street? Oh, I love it. You love it, right? I love We're, educational art, yeah. The and reason a lot of people, you realize why people don't like Sesame Street? Can you give the critique? Sure. Uh, they would think it's corny or stupid or child. A lot of people think it just jumps around too much. It's like you're talking about the number three for about 30 seconds with a flashy cartoon, and then bam, you're talking about the letter A. And then you've got Big Bird singing something, and then you're back to this other thing. And they think it's like MTV, it's all jump cuts. And the reason kids are so screwed up is they can't follow a train of thought for more than 30 seconds. That's the, the critique I hear. I think with Sesame Street, they're gonna be uh, on the other side of that. They're gonna be on the side where attention is measured in greater numbers than on the cell phone apps. In other words, the kids are getting the jump cuts from the commercial stuff and Sesame Street's just trying to keep up. Their attention span's still gonna be longer than the general. Right, you're saying don't blame Sesame Street for just trying to keep up with the-, the Gotta get their attention somehow. Right. That's why magic works so well. Right. So <laughs> what we're looking at, you've got on the screen now, we talked about earlier, it's the Telstar model of this every, the, it's the soccer ball we all know most. The hexagon, yep. pentagons, Adidas took it and ran with it. And in soccer lore, which I'm not an expert on, you can specialize in the ball itself. Like what's it made out of, how it's made. True. And when it comes to like cutting up the surface of a sphere, there's another book, Divided Spheres, which is all about how we can, right, go from one to another pattern on a surface of a sphere. So it won't always be like the newer World Cup models are not Telstar. The hexapent design, I call it hexapent, it's because there's 12 pentagons. There's the Divided Spheres book, yeah, exactly, by Ed Popko. And then here's Right. What's going on in Britain with the signage is they realize after the fact that all their freeway signs about, you know, this way to the stadium show the soccer ball incorrectly. And there was a lot of defensive reaction in the mathematician community when this was pointed out to defend how in some higher dimension there might be a good explanation. But the, the fact is, this guy wants to start a petition to fix the icon because it's bogus. They didn't put in, they didn't draw it right. And people just not used to the principles of a soccer ball don't realize that those 12 pentagons are mandatory for topological reasons, right? You can't use all hexagons on a ball. Just That's right. Right, so 
So that's the doorway for kids through the soccer ball and especially the Telstar Adidas version that everyone thinks of when they say soccer ball. But then we have to use the caveat that actually soccer balls can be in all different patterns and we'll probably see so many more, right? So kind of like Escher tilings, right? You could have all lizards or something. So right. how many fives and how many sixes on a soccer ball? Well, you've got a total of 60 vertices. So those are the corners. That's like yep. C60. And then you've got Euler's law, V plus F equals E plus two, which is edges plus two equals vertices plus faces. So the exercise we take kids through is try to get them to deduce all those things yeah, but you do have to give them some upfront information and then it's all about fill in the blanks. So C60 tells you it has 60 carbon atoms at the vertices, right? But then, you know, I think we should leave it to the viewer to think more about it. Right? But actually the formula up there, what is that saying? Number of faces times N? Yeah. I'd have to go back and listen to this video to remember exactly yeah. Point he's making the number file and the computer file YouTube channels are both great places to go for yeah. all this information. If you if your main language is English, which I'm not saying mine is. No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm speaking. Um, what do we call it when it's post English American English? I knew this poet guy. He said we should invent the word am amurish amurish. For yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of what we talk, kind of how yeah. we speak. Because the meanings changed a lot, and there's been a lot of like morphing of English, and it's almost sometimes we don't notice it's different. Yeah. Anyway, you want to let me show the blender thing for a sec? I'd like to see that, and that's how you created. This is like from a Python scripts here I'll, I'll, I'm ready to share the screen here we go so this is a python script generates all these vertices which I'm here showing by rotating this thing right so blender lets you do all this in real time in terms of rotating rotating and stuff but actually computing this lattice to start just to choose what frequency so we count one two three four five and in my backyard in another video I think will show that I have both a three and a four frequency of this in plastic, like done in C60 itself. And here right. we're just virtual, right? And these are not C60 balls individually. These are icosahedrons. And in the last video, part one, I said you could put skulls, you could put basically any object. You're just repeating it in a certain position. And then, you know, we're basically filling space uniformly. We're trying to have equidistant between all neighbors and 12 neighbors around every center neighbor and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot to say and learn before you get to the really serious issues of, can I drive a truck over it? Or, you know, does this have enough uh, stability for a TV tower in the, in the wind and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So. Like I would trust kids and children to to do animations and play with all these ideas before I would trust, you know, you need a lot of training before I'm gonna like fly on an airplane designed, you know, you know, you yeah. want yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? There's a lot involved uh from the point where you build something and then you gotta test it. Yeah. And the testing takes a long time. Right, the prototype through a series of uh, credentials. Right, before so it becomes for, public, like a, a pure copper C60, that's like pretty far along, right, compared to just doing this on CAD. Right, but, but you, it's like you still need to brainstorm and do it on CAD first before you get. So that's why I'm a big fan of like even though they're small. 3D printing all these modules, the S module, the A modules, the ones I've been talking about. All this information's all over the internet, so we don't have to do it all here. But right. That's the school of tomorrow, the blender and all that. Yeah. And it's interesting, we're gonna want to talk more soon about what educational 
things are happening now that schools are closed. Right. Big, and big, struggling big to talk. reopen and struggling to stay open. And education may have to change. And the pattern of C60 doing um, using nature's geometry is similar to the kind of pattern that people are finding amongst each other that might help them live in a way that doesn't spread this virus and gets rid of it. In other words, efficient natural patterns is how uh, we need to live. And this represents a strong possibility for revolutionizing how I materials think it's are. Exactly right. Yeah. It's, it's a perfect, it's kind of, you need icons and symbols and music and art anyway there has to be like a, a lot of things have to come together to communicate to people what the possibility is what we could do, could be doing and i feel c60 is kind of at the forefront as one of those symbols right it's it's like a flagship artifact that's saying hey yeah. there's this whole future we could be working on uh let's get down to business right it's an ecological idea I would add whose time has come because we need to experiment. Look, we're about to go back to school. And what if we had one teacher with six students, you know, and every teacher was outdoors and every t kid was 10 feet apart? I would imagine, here's my picture. It's like, think of an ordinary office building of like a, an insurance building somewhere downtown. Let's just pretend that a floor of that is now devoted to what we now call school. Right. Every kid, every kid has a cubicle. So you've already right. got your distance. You've got your barrier. And the teacher's job is to help them get used to this cubicle environment, not because they're going to be moving into the office building necessarily, but because at home, they're building up something similar, something what school is about more than ever now is helping you build a sort of media space studio where you can live, work, and study safely and securely. It's not about a locker and something on your back going from room to room where no one pays any attention to what your security system is at home or anything. You don't have a safe space as far as anyone else is concerned. They're not interested in that. Or if you don't, it's not their problem. Let's put it that way. If you do, you're That's called right. privileged. But That's you right. know, we should not lower the bar so far that only a privileged few get to learn all this stuff, right? Like the blender takes horsepower. You can't necessarily do it. We can't do it at all on a cell phone. You can't do it without a, any equipment. You know what I'm saying, right? There's equity issues here. Yeah, we have serious needs um, in terms of technology now that we've, wow, that's true. I never really thought of it that way. I mean, I've known that, but I just never. Yeah, I'll, my background. I, without that now. On a future video, I'll, 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 hold, I'll wave around one of those XOs. Maybe you got one too, the one laptop per child, remember that? How would we rebuild uh, Bluetooth if everything fell apart, you know? <laughs> oh dear so we do need this stuff we need to preserve it we need to figure out how to give more students everyday students like high school students access to the equipment they need to learn you know i'd say contemporary math which to me means it's got horsepower it does burn energy more than than just a brain right you need and a calculator is not enough, you actually need some serious equipment at some point. Yes. And there's a lot of purists who say, no, 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 math is not like that at all. It's a topic where you just need paper and pencil. And if you're really good, you don't even know that need that. You can just lie on your back on the beach and do math in your head. And that's the ideal. And I'm saying, well, what we need to teach them, don't call it quite math then because it isn't about lying on the beach in the sun and, and dreaming it's about experiential learning yeah and learning to type and understanding about unicode and a lot of like bare bolts kind of computer how does the internet work that's real important to know probably as important as what is a prime number but i'm not dropping the prime numbers in fact they get more uh, 
front and center, prime numbers, composite numbers, all that number theory stuff kind of got sliced out at some point, according to some authorities. Like, there was a huge anti-German sentiment. You know, I'm not talking about during Hitler's time, but it was it was associated with prohibition a lot. It's like Germans encouraged beer drinking, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I don't have to go over all the propaganda, but it was not cool to have Gauss be like too celebrated. Like you have to change textbooks sometimes just to get the right heroes. And we think maybe in America this doesn't happen, but of course it happens. You have to pick who you're going to talk about. And slicing out Gauss was part of an agenda a long time ago. I'm not saying anymore. In fact, now with encryption and everybody needing to understand basic security of how does computer protect your privacy, blah, blah. The number theory stuff is front and center now. Everyone wants to know that stuff. Right. So the, the curriculum has to change hugely. I feel like when I just show and talk about geometry, maybe if you're a teacher listening, it's like, well, oh dear, this is not going to help my children because you're just talking about geometry. We don't really, you know, you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. What I'm saying is that th this pattern and the pattern to solve our, our spatial problems are similar in that we have to use the ingenuity of what we've got right in front of us. Yeah. And because of the, the world itself, the planet being spherical, it's so natural to think spherically about problem solving because in that it's a literal truth, not a metaphorical truth, you know, that we live on a sphere. And it's so easy to say that's a cliche or a platitude, but it really does affect um, your vision to, to really see that. I know that's why the Stuart Brand started the campaign, why haven't we seen the whole earth yet? That was back in the early days of NASA, right? So we knew there were pictures of Earth from space, but they were all too, quote unquote, classified. No one was sharing them publicly. There were no postcards. And so Stuart Brand started this thing. Why haven't we seen pictures of the whole Earth yet? That was like an early hashtag. Right. <laughs> it was before the internet or anything. Right. Getting, getting people to divulge important things, that can be tough, right? And so there's, there's a lot <clears throat> we would like, I don't know, it's, it's been interesting just in my lifetime learning things about World War II that were kind of secret during World War II. Mm -hmm. Like all this stuff about Alan Turing and Bletchley Park and, you know, Cryptonomicon by Stephen, by, um, you know, Stevenson, Neil Stevenson, right? Cryptonomicon. He's up in Seattle there, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the great authors of our time, Baroque and all that. He, he really opened my eyes to that whole enigma machine with the Germans and all this. And we're still, to this day, in the dark about a lot of stuff because it's too early. They haven't told us yet or whatever. And that's kind of and, frustrating. And we're creating darkness for ourselves right now. I just got an alert that says uh, Governor Ensley has changed things uh, for phase three. We can only have 10 people in a place now, not 50. So we were at 50. And so we're seeing that how many people cause what now? What does it cause when we go back to this? Well, now we had to go back to 10. Yeah, it's kind of like I picture somebody in a really bumpy road in a Jeep where they only half understand what the different things do and, right. you know, they're driving with quotes around it, scare quotes, right? Right. Yeah, we're just, you know, winging it is what they call it. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, we're flying into the school time, and I'm not sure I approve of all the jargon that goes out. Like, is your school closed if you've got an online system going? It's like, what is closed? I don't see that the building doesn't have people thronging through it. There's just not much going on. Going back to what I was saying before, you bring these kids together in their cubicles, which could be in a school building, but there are yeah. much fewer kids in the building at any one time. Right. And you're there to show them, hey, this is what a study carol is like. Here's your own computer. Here's where you can have physical files. Now, most of the time, you're not going to be in this building learning about this stuff. You're going to be home where you're going to have something similar, right? You just right. come in here to get trained at how to use 
uh, the system and then go home and do it there, right? That's what I'm thinking. Right. And that would be very, very, very different than what we have now, but. And it would it, employ, it would employ many of the people who need employment. It would, and it addresses all this income inequity and, you know, so what if I go home and there's no internet? You know, how can I have a study carol at home? And now we're in a discussion about living standards and what's the bare minimum. Why doesn't the government give you a cell phone if you don't have one? You know, what, what you know, just- and Why don't we build things out of smart materials? Yeah, I mean, why don't we do all of these things we could be doing to improve our lot? Why do we sit around like on a sinking ship blaming the captain when clearly the captain's wheel is barely connected to anything, right? It's just a spinner. Right. It's like a toy wheel and it's like, why can't you drive with that thing? It's kind of obvious why, you know, it doesn't <laughs> connect. Anyway, it's a big puzzle. I hope we can help with it. I, I'm, I'm all in with that. Hey, I'll see you next time and we'll uh, put this up even though it's, we're new to this and we're just kind of doing it for fun now. I agree. And I think we've yeah. touched on, you know, we covered what we needed to, which was yeah. what's the S module and what does Blender look like and all that stuff that we started yeah. in the last video. So we're kind of closing out the loose ends here.